or you've been playing Warhammer Mechanicus because you have no time to game. <laughs> Welcome to the next When the Credit Roll video series, in which I only create a review once I've actually seen the credits roll, to give you a little bit of faith in what you're hearing. In the grim darkness of the far future, there is only war. So, what is a Warhammer Mechanicus about? Well, it's set in the expansive Warhammer 40k universe, or Warhammer 40,000 universe. We take on the role of Mechanicus, it's one of the armies in the tabletop war game Warhammer 40,000 from Games Workshop. But what is Mechanicus, I hear you say, on top of all of this? Well, they are a bunch of religious nutbags that worship technology to a fanatical level, act as the mechanical arm of humanity's expansion in the galaxy. Humanity also has various other forces as well that in the tabletop game and the lore you can play and read about, Mechanicus just being one of many human factions. At the very core, they're tech heads. This doesn't mean like your average nerd and mechanics. No, they're not afraid of upgrading themselves and their men with lethal weapons of war and taking to the field themselves. And opposing them on this field of battle in this game is the Necrons, a race of kind of undead robots out to claim the galaxy that was once theirs. There's a lot more to the Necrons than just being undead robots, but that's as close a description as like as simple as description as I can think of. The game's premise is a simple one. The Mechanicus find themselves on the tomb world of the Necrons, a place where the Necrons have been asleep, basically waiting for their time to rise again. Hence, it's kind of like a tomb, like Egyptian pyramids that come back to life after a while. Following a distress beacon from the previous venture on the planet of Silver Tenebris, the distress beacon suggests that the world contains both, both a potential benefit and a great threat to humanity. So Magos Faustinus and his underlings decide to head to the planet to hopefully stem any Xenos threat and look for any opportunity that will help mankind's war machine against the dark galaxy they're in. But they will be alone, only having whatever forces they bring with them to withstand the might of an awakening tomb world and the Necron forces, led by the overlord Zaragon. So it's Zaragon. Zargon. Zargon? They have strange names, and I apologise for mispronouncing any. <laughs> it's, it's 40k. 40k is full of weird words and names, mostly for copyright reasons. So, will they find themselves disintegrated under the gas flares of this strange undead enemy? Well, let's find out. The story is mostly told through the conversations of the upper echelons Faustinius has brought with him. These Magos are varied and, and quite the characters each has their own way of talking. Some of them are more human and some of them are more robotic, but each of them are very driven in their particular area of research, such as Vidix, Vidix the priest, the priestiest of the tech priests, Catrix, that has a singular focus for the hunt, or the most human of the crew, Kepra, who leads the Qatari forces sent to die in the tombs. <laughs> the overall story is very simple, but due to how the missions are chosen, more on that in a bit. You can get quite a different experience and see different branches or side story to the main quest. And these are entertaining to experience. The Necrons themselves are also fun to deal with as the higher ups actually interact and talk with us in a very shocking manner. You see, the tech freaks all speak in binary, so you have to read subtitles, but the Necrons speak in clear English, which was a little shocking after listening to the bleeps and bloops. But yeah, the story overall kept me entertained, and I enjoyed playing the missions from a favourite Magos. And actually, in the final mission, got a bit of chills from the interaction between Faustinius and the Big Bad. So this is an interesting game, as it's kind of a roguelite, while being a turn-based tactical game, like, like most of the games I review. But what does that mean? Well, due to the nature of progression, you get to choose your path towards the end and each mission appears to have somewhat randomly generated map to explore, hence the roguelike element. And then each battle is based somewhat on the actions you take on the map leading up to the battles. So it, it offers a lot of variety. So firstly, at a battle, you have to organize your cohort, your army. You start with a couple of tech priests, 
the priests are your main fighting force, your leaders in a sense. And as you progress through the game, you unlock more of these dudes, and you also unlock loads of troop types as well that you can take on your missions and partake in battle. Now, the big difference between the tech priests and the troops is the ability to choose their progression and effectively level them up. Normal troops can get stronger, but that's like a mission reward. You kind of get like, so I have my Skitari Ranger, he's at level one, and then I've unlocked the level two variant later on. It makes him a little bit stronger, and that's it. It's just completely random if you get them or not. But the priests upgrade by attaching them with a series of equipment, and they have quite a lot of items you can kick them out with. But they do have kind of like a weight limit that's dependent on the level, like the amount of skills you've unlocked. The more skills you've unlocked for them, the higher their weight limit is, so to speak. Um, and some items take up more than one point of weight, effectively. And the more you level up, the better they are. Now, the leveling isn't leveling in a traditional sense. You don't gain experience points and hit a level by taking them out to battle. No. The tech priests have a tech tree that has a number of different paths that you can follow. Each step you take along the path is kind of like a level. Each path is quite different, such as one being a healer of sorts, one buffs priests, one buffs your normal troops, etc. Now the cool thing with Calicus is you're not stuck to one path, as I thought you were at first. So I thought as soon as I selected one path I had to go down and complete that path before being able to do anything else. But you don't have to, you can literally mix and match your skills across all the paths if you want. Which is really cool because you can really customise your tech priests to be how you want them. And there are some like level one or two skills in the, the path that is great for every character to have kind of thing. So you can make them exactly how you want. But this does have a cost and that's using Blackstone, which is kind of the main currency for the game. So each level, each skill unlocked along the tech path costs Blackstone, which you earn from completing missions and doing various bits on the map. So before choosing the mission, you can also at this point spend some time looking at all the items you've unlocked, any canticles you've unlocked, and all that sort of normal jazz around games that you see in games these days. So now on the bridge of the battleship itself, you find each Magos has a portrait and they're usually offering some sort of mission. Each one of the Magos offers a different rewards for completing their mission. So this is your first choice. Basically you go through each one, have a look at what they have on offer, um, see what rewards they're offering, what the level of the mission is. Is it small, like uh, medium, hard, easy? What Necrons are gonna be in the particular battles? And then you make your choice based on what rewards you want, if you're willing to face those certain Necrons, etc. But anyway, now you select your mission, you get to select what priests you want and what troops you want to take. You have a number of slots unlocked and you can unlock more as the game goes on as a reward for doing various missions. So you take all your priests and then you select the troops you want. And you can bring multiple of the same troop as well if you want, which is something I didn't realise at first, I thought I could only select one of each troop. But no, you can select the same troop multiple times. Um, but taking the troops costs for Blackstone, so make sure you have some spare from upgrading your tech priests. You also get to choose your canticles. Canticles are unlocked by doing various things in the game. Um, such as, I don't know, killing X number of Necrons, using X thing and X number of times, etc. You know, like small... Small kind of like challenges, unlock canticles. Um, and the canticles themselves are like one-off powerful abilities and they can achieve various things during the gameplay. So they can make your weapons do more damage for a turn, they can heal one of your guys, they can give you action points back. And they're all quite powerful and can swing a turn a battle in one go kind of thing. So choose the three that you want to bring wisely. Okay, now we've selected who we want to take with us. We've selected our mission. We've leveled off our tech priests. We deploy onto the map. Each map is a series of rooms or nodes that you progress through, usually with the goal being to complete one of the battle nodes, one or two of the battle nodes. Uh, and as you progress through each room, a number of things could happen. 
Uh, firstly, you come across glyphs. Glyphs are kind of like the Necron language um, icons, and depending on which one you select when you're given the choice, something good or something bad will happen. The good could be like new item, getting Blackstone, raising your initiative, covering HP, action points, and more. And the bad is usually the opposite, such as like awakening the Necrons, damaging some of you guys, etc. And as you progress through the game, the more times you use these symbols, so once you hit a certain number of use of the symbols, it then actually highlights it for you because you know what it is now. Like your tech priests know what that symbol is. So you know if it's got a green edging, it's good. Um, and if it's neutral or red, you might not want to do it because you might want to just go with the safe one. But it's up to you to remember exactly what that good thing is though. You just know it's good. Uh, some of the nodes are kind of like small story scenarios. Um, they give you similar results to the glyphs, and but you get like a choice of actions based on a small story snippet. Um, what I found was trying to think like the Magos that the mission was based from was usually the best result. Not always. So if it, I would say doing Videx, the priestess of the priests, if I took a more priestly option, it was more likely to be good than taking something very unpriest, like unpriestly. <laughs> so as you're progressing through the map, though, what's happening is each step, the Necrons in that area are waking up and you have kind of like a counter on the map that shows their awakening level. And the more the higher the awakening level, the more Necrons you're going to face in battle. They come in uh, usually as reinforcements during the battles, and the higher the level, the more dangerous and more of them come out, and more of them you'll have to face, making the map harder. So the more you wake them up, the harder it's going to be. So, anyway, on to the meat and metallic bones of the game, the battle nodes where our little techly dudes must fight the shiny horde. So how does it play? Well, so no, it's a classic I go, you go game. So all my guys go and then all the Necrons will go, which is cool. We get to basically what we have is we have in the middle of the menu, you'll see a set number of action points. These action points relate to how many actions your character can take. They can always move, um, but if they want to move again their movement distance, they'll need to use an action point, and then they can move again using another action point. Um, using some of their skills that they've earned from their tech trees, or using some of the weapons they've got equipped, will also use action points. Uh, some of the weapons are actually free, some of the skills are actually free. So you can do quite a lot with each tech priest, depending on how you've equipped them and what skills you've unlocked for them. The skills and the weapons for your troops are always free. They get to use them all pretty much every turn. Some skills do have a cooldown though, as in like X number of turns before they can be used again. And that's how they restrain the troops skills usage. But getting action points isn't the simplest thing in the world. Obviously, it's a square grid map. Um, each map is interestingly designed. Lots of small uh, choke points and large open areas. There's even moving elements that move each turn. So taking like elevators around the map and stuff like that. It's pretty cool. There's a lot of design going on on the maps. Um, so you, what you'll find yourself doing is aiming to get to elements on the map that produce energy for your action points. With one of your tech priests stood next to it, they absorb the points, and it can be like one or two or even three points, action points for you. And also when you defeat an enemy, like down them, it will also absorb action points. So you'll be going around, as it's a shared pool, you'll be trying to balance the use of your action points along all your troops making sure they can hit the nodes to give them action points back, to make sure your other guys also have the ability to use their weapons, 
and sometimes you might just run out and that's when you might use a canticle canticles can be used at any point by anyone um, depending on their effect will so if you use the healing one it will heal the one that you're using it with so just be careful on your usage but there are ones that give you action points so you could use that at any point to get yourself action points so you're balancing your action points you're now using your weapons to attack the enemy you're using your skills to heal to put up shields it's actually it's very simple but also quite complex in what you can do in a turn which is really fun there's one thing interesting though there's nothing there's no um tile effects so to speak there's no cover system or anything like that there is line of sight blocking elements but it's either your sight is blocked or it's not and on top of this every attack hits and does its damage there's none of this like chance to hit so you always know what's going to happen there is a random number generator in how much damage you do um as in each weapon like might be like three to six damage and depending on its role you either do the three four five or six and then enemy shields and armors will reduce that each character has like um but a potential armor and like damage reduction for physical and energy weapons so energy weapons come in energy or physical types most of the physical types are close combat but there's some like kinetic weapons that also do physical damage and a lot of the other weapons do energy damage and some of them hit area of effect so something can hit more than one enemy and some of the enemies can do that to you as well so you want to be sure not to group you guys together if you're facing an enemy that has an area effect attack overall like i said there's a lot to think about in battle and it's pretty cool um there's also bringing in your troops now you don't get to just deploy them each troop has an action point cost to bring them in and you usually bring them in at the start of your turn so you have to make sure you've got the action points to bring them in especially your big big guys they can take like three four action points just to bring in uh, so you want to be balancing that as well making sure you're you're doing the damage and having enough to bring in all your troops that you want but there is a skill that allows you to just summon a guy in which is really cool and you can use that every time it renews to bring in one for free but one thing to note you're fighting necrons necrons are known for one thing and that's reanimation so you don't just kill a necron you most of them there are some that do just die but most of them when you defeat them get them down to zero health they drop to the floor and in x number of turns depending on their awakening level they will stand back up and if you kill them again after they stood back up that's it they're gone but while they're down if you can hit them once with anything you just kill them outright so there's that to think about as well you defeat your enemy they're down but now do i shoot another one and risk them getting back up or do i kill it but you might have only got a three ap weapon left that's going to do a lot of damage is it worth using that on a downed enemy probably not so there's a lot again even more to think about <laughs> Uh, there's also when it comes to the battles there's a couple of different missions you can do so the classic one the one you'll face most of the time is kill all the enemies but there's also kill a particular enemy usually one of the necron overlords or there's destroy certain objects on the map these are usually formed of consoles that by destroying them you actually get blackstone so if you find them in normal maps it's usually worth destroying them as well and they also reduce the awakening when you destroy them so uh, oh and absorbing them your tech priest can can also absorb out of them as well as just destroy them so you can get the missions where you have to destroy those things and then there's sometimes just getting your tech priests out of life if it's like an ambush scenario it's quite funny though 
by the end of the game, your tech priests are pretty strong with a lot of variety, and the game can only ramp up its difficulty so far. So I have had maps, especially where it's the get the tech priests out alive, where I've been able to do it in a single turn because I can generate the AP, shoot them around the map because I've up their movement speeds and all sorts, just zoom everyone off the map in one go. It was quite funny and feels quite amazing, especially compared to the start of the game where you get absolutely hammered. And even like a normal Necron warrior is a threat, but at the end of the game, you do feel quite strong. But there is, that is one of the dichotomies of the game. Like the start of the game feels very hard. The end of the game feels a little bit easy. But yeah, hopefully that's kind of like a understanding, like help you understand a bit of how the game works. Um, so what is actually good? Firstly, I love Mamegos and their communication with each other. They're talking, they're back and forth. Some of them just don't like each other. Some of them are very driven and the bleeps and bloops are so funny to listen to as they bleep and bloop at each other. The soundtrack as well, it's not something I mention very often in games, about games, because I'm not the biggest sound person. My my sound, my understanding of music is very limited, but the soundtrack of Mechanicus is perfect for the game. And it's very rare I'll ever say that, but it is absolutely perfect for the game. The gameplay as well is really crunchy. The animations, the weight behind everything feels so good to watch and listen to. Everything just feels very 40k, as I would think the 40k, they just slam into each other, the enemies smash, like the weapons smash into the enemies, oh it's great. What's bad? Um, honestly, not a great deal, apart from like I said, the game at the start is very hard, like it's hard, the game at the end is very easy, there wasn't much balance there. Now, I personally find that quite fun. I went from being that weakling to the super strong tech priest army. Felt amazing. But the final boss could have been a bit more challenging. Now anyway, before my final thoughts, we always have a quick look at what the critics thought. And according to Metacritic, it got a 78 from the critics and an 8.1 or 81 from the users. Now I am more in line with the users here. Honestly, I probably even rate it even higher. I thought the game was great. And honestly, I don't know why they're getting off given it such a low score. Maybe they don't like tactical turn-based games. Maybe they don't like Warhammer. And they just thought, that's another Warhammer game. I don't know. But anyway, yeah, my final thoughts is if you like tactical games, even if you just like Japanese ones, play this. If you've never played Warhammer before, play this. This could be your introduction into the game. The game feels so good to play. The interactions between all the characters are so fun. Hearing the Necron speak compared to that in Mechanicus speak is a brilliant little twist. And overall, it's just a fun game to play and listen to. I can't say much more. So as you probably guessed, my final rating is a must play.